So off the beaten path, where most rafters don't see, are these fences. And they are stretched in oval shapes, about 40 feet long, 4 to 6 feet wide. Presumably there to protect the vegetation. The more the vegetation grows, the less erosion occurs. I presume that's why they're there. But these ovals stretch for miles. In between each oval, these 10 foot wide sections where people can walk through, people or animals. The fences themselves become a little dilapidated over the years and definitely aren't doing what they're supposed to. Underwater here, you might be able to see the, the fence laying down and rusting, bottom part of it buried in the mud. What will happen is that the top part of the fence that's exposed to the open water will rust much faster, and the part that's buried under the mud won't. So you'll have these spikes sticking up just under the surface of the mud, and some unsuspecting animal or person will come along and step in the mud thinking that it's nice soft mud and have a nice rusty spike every two inches poking to their feet. Found this one interesting. Behind this fence is a log and on the log is a dead salmon and it's been placed across like an animal had been pecking away at it or chewing away. Looks like it was dragged across by an animal. Another one over there. The interesting part is I don't see a place in this fence where an animal can get through on the surface. So I guess what we're talking about is an animal that got through below the surface. Here's an example of a part of the fence that's breaking through. It may be a little difficult to see, but all these wires here are, are broken and bent. And you can see, aimed right towards this fish, that the wiring has been bent inwards. So an animal, I'm guessing a river otter, pushed its way through the bottom of the fence where it's resting through here. These sticks here are freshly chewed by beaver, and I wonder how they got in there. Now, just below these sticks, it's another place where the fence is rusted out at the water line. It's a hole just barely big enough for a small beaver to get through. See, it's bent inward, so the, a beaver had to fight its way through to get in there. These rusty spikes are sticking down. I, you know, beavers have pretty thick fur, and they're probably just fine, but beaver had to fight its way through the fence to get to some food. And then you can see the freshly chewed sticks behind the, or underwater there, where it actually ate. Another interesting thing about this spot, where this hole is in the fence is just underwater you can see lots of clam shells freshwater clams one of the favorite foods of the river otter it's a popular section of the river just above Anselhoffen Park and you can see that the fences here are falling apart this is a natural shoreline through here place where the uh, the river is doing what it wants, what it normally does, what rivers do. Oh, there goes some salmon. More salmon. Lots of salmon. Probably just floated right over a little spawning ground right there. But I don't know if you can see, but right here in front of me is where one of the fences used to be. Last year we had a fairly good flood. I think it was 30,000 cubic feet per second. Pretty good flood for the American River. But if you can see in these bushes, the entanglement of an old fence, here's a rebar right here holding up the fence. This is all fencing right here. Of course the flood just shredded it, tore it apart. The river did what it normally does and that's just scour things and move them. Here's the skeletal remains of another fence. You know this I'm sure this was difficult to put in, unwind the fences and pound all the rebar stakes in, but it's going to be even more difficult to take out. I sure hope the plan wasn't to let it just rust free. 
Here's the reason why I'm more agitated about this. My son and I found this the other day. It's a buck. Dead buck. What you don't see in this shot is why it died. Underwater, its head and antlers are right at the bottom of the river. This beautiful five-point buck. I'm trying to get in position for it here. For you to see is the wire fencing wrapped around its antlers. What happened to this buck was it was trying to get to some vegetation that was protected by the fencing. Got its antlers tangled up in the, in the wiring. Tried to get free and of course got tangled worse. And at some point, after dragging the fence around for a while, it tried to swim across the river and of course the fencing would drag its head into water. That's what I think happened to it. And here it lies, floating in the river, right across from a nature preserve, Epi Yaw. And it is just 20 feet away from fencing. Another reason why I think these fences should go. They're rusting out, it's time for them to go.